The well-being of Oklahoma children is getting better, but a new report shows there are still areas of concern. The yearly Kids Count data book indicates progress in education and health, but childhood poverty remains stubbornly entrenched. The 2013 Kids Count report, issued by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, shows the level of high school students who fail to graduate on time has dropped from 22% in 2006 to 21% in 2010. Teens who abuse alcohol and drugs dropped from 8% in 2006 to 6% in 2011. And the number of children without health insurance dropped from 13% in 2008 to 11% in 2011. Doug Gibson is the interim director of the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. And so that's on the one hand very satisfying and very pleasing that the state of Oklahoma has made some progress. But then on some of the other domains where we have kind of slid backwards a little bit, then that's disturbing. Gibson points to economic well-being as one area of concern. The report shows 23 percent of Oklahoma children are living in poverty, a level that has not budged in several years. The percentage of children in high poverty areas more than doubled, going from 5 percent in 2000 to 12 percent in 2011. The number of children whose parents lack secure employment has also increased from 29% in 2008 to 30% in 2011. And while it's true Oklahoma's unemployment levels during the recession were lower than the nation as a whole. Unfortunately, too many of the jobs that we did have were low paying jobs. And whenever individuals are involved in low paying jobs and it's hard to pull themselves out of that lower socioeconomic rung and climb into the middle class. Gibson believes the key to turning the economic picture around is greater investment in early childhood education. He says research shows children benefit from the pre-K programs offered by the state. They're ready to start learning. They're, they're up to speed in terms of their verbal skills, in terms of their reading skills, in terms of their social skills. So the better they are when they start school, then the more likely they are to succeed when they enter school. Oklahoma's early childhood education program is often cited as one of the most successful in the nation at preparing young children for school. We do have a statewide mandated program for four-year-olds, pre-K. That's great news. We're in many places we are shown as a model state in terms of our statewide program for four-year-olds. Gibson says the program gives low-income families greater educational opportunities than they had in the past, but 59 percent of Oklahoma children still don't attend preschool. So we need to find out why. We need to aggressively educate and inform parents that these programs are available to their children and do everything that we can to get those children involved because we know those children then when they start kindergarten do better. Deborah Anderson is the executive director for Smart Start which helps parents find information on preschool and child care resources. Anderson believes early childhood education is a vital economic development tool. Economists look at investments as in early childhood as a no-brainer. Um, the return on investment that you gain in society for the investments that you make in early, early childhood give us a great, great return on our investment. Children who participate in early childhood programs do have higher graduation rates, have lower teen pregnancy rates, and um, are more likely to, to at least obtain that high school degree without a lot of the other baggage that, that can um, come, come with riskier teen behaviors. Budget cuts have taken a toll on some early childhood programs. More than 2,000 children are enrolled in the Head Start program in central Oklahoma, but that program is losing $600,000 this year due to sequestration. Anderson says pre-K programs in Oklahoma's public school systems have also felt the budget acts. Funding is being reported as being slightly less, and that's due to some funding cuts that the State Department of Education has had to 
in part with local school districts. So funding per pupil has gone down just a little bit in pre-K. Unfortunately, if you are lower income, it's very difficult to be able to afford a preschool program for your three-year-old. Um, so the best option is when families have that accessible to, through their local schools. Gibson says while the governor and legislature have emphasized pro-growth policies and a business-friendly environment, there should be a greater focus on the state's children. We as a state have invested heavily in incarceration, but we haven't invested as heavily in early childhood education, early childhood development. And I would really like to see our state give more attention to that. And even though we're doing a lot, we're not doing enough. Oklahoma is doing more to address the needs of children who come into the care of the Department of Human Services. Deborah Smith is the Director of Child Welfare Services for DHS. She says the Pinnacle Plan, that was formed in response to a lawsuit by a children's rights group, has led to improvements in Oklahoma's child welfare system. One of the biggest um, strides that we're making with Pinnacle Plan is keeping young children out of congregate care or shelters. So um, having young children with families as opposed to being in buildings or in shelter care um, certainly goes a long way towards improving brain development and, and they're giving children a better start in life. Smith says the state is trying to provide more good foster homes to place young children with families. Last year, Oklahoma raised reimbursement rates for foster care by $40 a month. In the Pinnacle Plan, we staged uh, raises for foster parents over a five-year time so that eventually they would be up to um, what would be a more fair reimbursement rate for foster care. Um, we, have, we haven't implemented the increase this year. We didn't get quite as much funding as we had hoped, so it won't be quite as large of an increase as we had last year. DHS also launched a public service ad campaign featuring Governor Mary Fallon to recruit more foster parents. Right now, more than 8,000 Oklahoma children are in the foster care system. There is an urgent need for foster parents, especially for teenagers, sibling groups, and children with special medical needs. Let me urge you to change a child's lifetime. Become a foster or adoptive parent today. Overall, the state's kids count ranking climbed from 40th to 36th in the last year, moving Oklahoma out of the bottom fifth of all states.